Hello lovelies. So today I want to show you uh, gizmos. So I use gizmos extensively uh, and basically they're just little visual indications on your scene view and your game view if you want uh, that kind of just help you in your development cycle. And just an example of uh, gizmos that you've seen a million times. If you create a light you'll see this little gizmo here uh, which is just shown in the scene view but if you want it to actually show in the game view as well you can press the gizmos button here. You can also press the gizmos button here on your scene view and hide it there. Let's get stuck in. So I'm just gonna open my intro script here. Now, uh, whenever you wanna play with gizmos, all you have to do is hook into the on draw gizmos. And in here, let's draw our first gizmo. So gizmos draw sphere, and it's asking for two things, where we wanna put it and our radius. So let's just say we'll put it at uh, world point zero and radius, let's say 0 0.5. So we'll head back to Unity. And now you can see we've got a gizmo there at 0, 0. Beautiful. We can also take advantage of our wire variants. And we'll put our other one at 1. So now we should have two spheres, one wire and one solid. There we go. Beautiful. You can also change their colors. So we'll just do gizmos color equals, uh, let's say, red. And as you can see, they're red. Now these are redrawn every single frame. So uh, I'll just demonstrate that. I'll make a for loop and we'll do like 10. And in here we will do uh, color is equal to random color. And we'll take a sphere here and draw this and we will draw it at random inside unit sphere times five or something and we'll make the uh, radius of this one five just kind of like the, the sphere is a, a bounding box and now if we try this out you'll see that they are 10 new spheres are being drawn every second uh, every frame then de destroyed and then drawn again uh, so that that kind of shows you that it is being redrawn every single frame and uh, gizmo is a very performance so we could probably add two zeros on this and it would be absolutely fine yep Getting a little bit of hectic. We could probably actually add another zero on that puppy. Let's try that. Probably start lagging a little bit now. Yeah, getting a little bit chunky, but as you can see, it is very performant. So you, you don't have to worry about your gizmos in your scene. Um, I'm sure you're not going to be having 10,000 gizmos. So uh, another thing you can do, I'll just comment that out. Another thing you can do is when you're raycasting something in your game, have you ever had uh, the experience where it's like the raycast just doesn't seem to work or like it's not hitting something that you expect it to be hitting? Well, you can make your job a little bit easier by saying draw ray uh, and then you can simulate the raycast that you're actually trying to do. So let's just say we're starting at zero. This might be your character and you might be like uh, shooting it forward or something. But let's just uh, say we're, uh, we're wanting to shoot uh, ray to one, right? Like we're going to shoot one, one, one. So now in our scene view, we can see that it is uh, drawing the ray itself. Now when you're actually doing a ray, you'll have a distance field where you can say, I want a distance of 10. Uh, but for us, you just, you know, you just multiply your uh, direction by that. And this will now shoot uh, 10 units. Okay, so that's not too exciting. So let's move on. Uh, this is my grounder. So when you uh, have a character and you want to jump, you only want them to be able to jump when they're on the on the actual ground, right? So when I press spacebar, my little dude will kind of just do a little flip and uh, land back down. So as you can see down here, I've got a little gizmo at its feet, and what's that? What that is doing is it's indicating where my grounder effect is is taking place. So if we just go into the grounder script here. Uh, you'll see that when I press spacebar, I'm only allowed to jump if I'm grounded and my grounded getter here is just doing an overlap sphere, a physics overlap sphere uh, at a certain position with a certain radius and if it detects the ground then it returns yes, uh, we are in fact grounded. So to make this easy on me, I want to know exactly where this is actually taking place. So on my on draw gizmos here, I'm drawing a Y sphere at that exact position with that exact radius and uh, it's just easy for me to know that it's right there. Because you may be doing your overlap sphere and you have no idea, like your ground offset might be like here or something, and you're, you're trying to jump and it's just not working. So with all the correct uh, gizmos in place, uh, the visual aids, you know exactly what's happening and uh, you won't get caught out. Okay, so the next one is my favorite. Uh, so in grid, uh, you might be creating a grid, right, with a width and a depth, and when you press play, all your uh, grid squares spawn, but in 
uh, when you're not playing, you have no idea where that is. So like, you can't do anything with this scene, right? You like, you don't know what's going on. Uh, so I draw gizmos uh, for the shape of my grid, which will obviously change, chop and change depending on how big my grid's gonna be. So then when I press play, the grid is exactly where it needs to be and I can build stuff around this scene or what have you. Uh, so that's very easy to do. Instead of just uh, grabbing your grid points in generate grid, I'll just uh, pull them out to like an evaluate grids, grid points function. So now I can use those grid points in both on draw gizmos and generate grid, right? I just iterate over the points and draw a, draw a uh, wire cube. By the way, you can put uh, Y as zero and it will just create a nice flat square for you. Um, and also I'm just checking if we're playing and if we are, I just won't draw these gizmos or else when we press play, the gizmos will be drawn on top of these and it looks a little bit uh, chaotic. And the last one is, uh, I just know that people in the comments are gonna tell me that I say this wrong, but Bezier curve. That's how I've always said it, I'm sorry. Uh, so this is, uh, I, I wrote a really quick and dirty Bezier uh, algorithm. It's horrible, please don't judge me on it. Uh, it was just to demonstrate uh, the different gizmos. So here I've got gizmos for anchors and uh, or uh, command points if you want to call them that and resolution points there and also the connections. So I can like up update my uh, resolution and it will change the resolution and then I can uh, grab these and just move them around. So just a typical Bezier curve. So it's made up of a few uh, gizmo components. So here we're setting yellow and then I'm drawing my spheres for my uh, resolution points there. And then here I'm saying uh, green and I'm drawing lines. So gizmo draw line and that is just, it's basically like a ray, but instead of giving it a starting and a direction, you give it a start and an end. So I'm actually drawing it in between these points here. And it's easy to see if we lower the resolution, you'll see it's just straight lines like that. So that's Gizmo's draw line. Very, very easy and, and very handy. Uh, and then I'm, I'm changing it to red and then drawing more stuff. So as you can see, the colors are hierarchical. Like you'll, you, whatever you set your color, every gizmo that you draw is gonna be that color until you change the color. Uh, or the, obviously the next scene comes around and then it all resets again. So that's all I wanted to show you. Uh, this is the basics of gizmos. I've got another one planned where I'm going to show uh, like handles and stuff, stuff that you can actually use and manipulate in the same view uh, and also text. So until then, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.